What is good, everybody, and welcome to Team COG here. And today, guys, I'm coming at you guys with a game three from my top four, or my, yeah, my top four uh, locals match here. And for those who don't know, I went for, like, undefeated all throughout Swiss, 4-0, then got to the top four here and just got my back blown out. And this is going to show you game three of getting my back blown out. So, like, why, why are you, it's like, you guys are like, Charles, why are you showing us, like, you losing, right? Like, what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to show you the correct play I did through it and stuff like that. Because we get hit with two very high impact hand traps, which is what's really important, what I really want to show you guys. Because Plant Link is truly insane. Sun Avalon, Rika, whatever you want to call it, it is truly insane. So with that being said, uh, please remember if you guys want, if you guys enjoy the hat, if you guys enjoy the mat, if you guys enjoy the sleeves, check out Imperium Duelist down below. Every little bit that gets put into the channel goes right back into it. And without further ado, guys, let's just quickly go ahead and show you guys like the first play, right? So we go ahead and get everything cut up, draw our first five cards, and we are off to the races. So, uh, to start out with here, I, I think, I can't try to remember my name here. We open with Unexpected Die. We open, like, one of the best starters in the entire, like, deck, right? So, we go Die. Die brings us out the seed. And, like, I'm like, sweet. We are off to the races right here. Uh, so, we're just waiting. And we go ahead and, like, we know what we're doing, right? We go straight for Drius. Respect the trees, the Lorax says. Drius effect, go ahead and gets us sunvine sewing so sewing is going to be cool but he's going to go ahead and show me the droll so here's the first major hand trap i end up taking as a droll if you guys don't know uh for the most part the deck does a tremendous amount of searching so this is a very high impact hand trap practically saying i'm not going to get no add off mardell no add off jasmine no add off another jasmine it literally slows down we're not even going to get madon to affect the search uh like we really get slowed down here and we really got to try and like make the best of what we got right so Droll's pretty good, but my hand, I look at my hand, I'm like, sweet, my hand can beat Droll. My hand is good enough that I still will be able to put up some disruptions regardless, because I think I opened a Princess in there as well, and arguably, I need to get better with Princess, but I'm still learning, like, the Rika stuff. Princess is a very good extender that I can put in the graveyard. Um, so, I end up just, I believe it just fire off Sewing. I, if I remember correctly, it's Sewing. Yep, so Sewing gets fired off. I pay the thousand, you know, I do the whole, like, the whole shebang there. And another thing I really don't like about this deck is that, uh, you don't get to draw there's zero draw power in the deck and i don't like that i would rather i want to draw so we're gonna go ahead and summon healer bring back out here so anyway this right here is that and he's gonna show me nibiru so again we've gotten drolled we're getting nibiru uh, what more can we do right like this is like the very high impact stuff that i'm kind of talking about uh, i didn't convene i think i opened discoliseum as well if i remember correctly but like i got drolled so there's no point in using it and then, believe it or not, I'd have been in a worse scenario if I fired off Disc Coliseum to start out with, because then I wouldn't have been able to get to sewing. But anyway, so he's going to show me Nib. You know, here, it just kind of blows my mind that somebody, like, can see two side deck cards, and I haven't even been able to see one all game. And he does make a very interesting play here. And I do, after watching this and editing this, I can tell you a few things. He was going to put it in the center, and my hand just happened to be kind of right there in the way, so he just goes ahead and puts it here. Uh, which is very good, but also, like, it kind of, like, irks me because, like, dang, if I would just had my hands out of the way, he probably would have put it right in the middle. And then if it's in the middle, it's Jasmine territory, which means Jasmine can tribute the token to summon out a plant. But anyway, just one of those interesting things I end up catching. So we've been drilled a nib. I still have a normal summon. And see, this is also why I'm going to vouch for this card called Lonefire Blossom. It is one of the other good normal summons in the deck here. Uh, looking at his hand, he looks like he has Shadal Fusion, Crackback, Crackdown, I think is what that saw, and like another spell. Uh, it's going to really, really tilt me if he ends up dr like drawing off the top here when I think he's going to draw. But uh, anyway, so we're going to see pretty much uh, I'm Lone Fire, and I'm, depending, I'm kind of debating what I want to Lone Fire for. Uh, there's no need for me to go back for the loki because i can't add right i can't use loki to go grab shrine so instead i just go for rika petal now rika petal does have a pretty interesting effect i should have probably used it but i don't think i saw any type to it so no he there he goes as you guys see you guys can see he's showing the, ca the camera the hand uh, but since a card was tributed like lumpfire i can tribute the primula uh, petal i could have arguably sent i guess i could have sent the um oh goodness i'm trying to lose my turn i could have sent rika princess from deck i didn't have to add it and then during the end phase, this comes back. But I'm going to go ahead and link here for, I don't think, any reason, really. I think, like, right now, I'm just trying to play through my mind, like, what I can do. Uh, this right here just kind of hurts, uh, to be honest with you. I don't I don't understand. I don't know why I went for this. Uh, there's really no need for me to waste the resources in making the other small tree, uh, to be honest with you. So I have Madon and Princess in hand. 
And I think I go for, see, I mean, it's just calculating. This deck's all about calculating. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward here. I end up making Dance Peon here. And I end up excavating three. I hit a spell. I hit Loki. And I end up hitting Disc Coliseum. So I must not have opened Disc Coliseum then. Uh, but this, see, this, this is another thing that kind of blows my mind. Statistically, you should almost hit two cards always off a of Dance Peony. It never makes sense to me that how I always seem to hit none or just some weak ones like this. Uh, but this is what Dance Peony's for, is to extend for these points, right? Dance Peony, I've been drolled. I've been nibbed. So this is exactly what Dance Peony's here for. I know that the, the Loki cannot be used as link material. So I hope I don't. Oh, no. Oh, see, maybe I catch it. I'm pretty sure I catch it. I'm almost certain. I think either I catch it or someone brings it up to me. But I'm trying to think of what I need to do. Uh, I cannot be. I cannot technically use the Loki here, but I do believe I, it's it's a caught. Uh, so, yeah. So, good. thank goodness we catch it. Because I, it cannot be used as Link material, which is a very easy thing to forget. Like, I remember when this Dance Peony first came out, uh, some people were like, this card's insane. Uh... And that was something that kind of threw me off was like this card is insane but why can't we use this stuff as link material like what does plants have right like anyway no point on uh but anyway since we can't make dance peony we end up summoning out uh, the princess from our hand and then we decide to use peony's effect to make both monsters at points to level four we're going to go ahead and overlay here for strina i believe and i hear this is where i think we mess up you guys will see kind of where we, we do make a very big mess up here so we end up making in strina we go ahead and detach the princess off of the Strina. I do believe I could try to add back a Rika card or something along those lines. And I don't want to add back the Rika petal. So I go ahead and detach here to add myself back. I believe we go for... Do I add back? No, I think I add back the princess. Uh, and the reason I've been doing it, I've been adding back princess a lot lately is because I want the... Uh, I don't want frame one call by the grave hitting princess. Because prince, if they hit princess, it ruins a lot of disruption. So now I'm thinking of the best lines of play here. I know what I'm playing against. Uh, I know I'm playing against Shadal Dogmatica, but also I gotta take note about the Nibiru staring me down, right? Nibiru's looking me in the face. I gotta be very conscious of this Nibiru and of what it might, you know, it's a 3000 attack monster, right? So like I gotta have some sort of insurance to check it. So I end up going Madon, tributing the Strina, summoning out Madon. Madon can't use its effect to search. Madon, uh, Strina though triggers. And normally you go for Hyperiton, but Hyperiton's pretty small. So instead I believe I go for Teardrop, which is like the, my thought process here. My thought process here is Teardrop, and any moment when Teardrop tributes a card, Teardrop becomes 2,000, or gets two, mandatory receives 200 attack, making it 3,000. The next line of play is going to be going for Bangalancer. So then it puts, like, even if he solves Bangalancer, Bangalancer can resurge itself, hence the name. Uh, so it definitely, like, Teardrop, I believe, was the correct call uh, in this sense, because even if he does also go to Battle Phase to try and force the Teardrop, I can get rid of the biggest monster out there. So I go ahead and link here. Melus, I believe. Melus touches down. Melus reborns back out the uh, Loki. Loki and Melus become Begalancer the Resurgent. My favorite, favorite plant card. Uh, so we end up making the Resurgent here. And we have Princess in hand. So what I want to show you guys here is that through Nib, through Droll, we are able to technically still end on three forms of disruption. Three of them things. Through that, that's how resilient Plant Link really is. And this is also why I do not agree with playing a bunch of hand traps and defensive cards because technically, if I had opened any defensive card in the matter, this hand would not have been possible. So that's why I truly believe on playing board breakers and extenders. I have long thought that process. I used to play a lot of hand traps back in the day. I used to literally play six to nine hand traps. And then one day I saw two hand traps, very high impact hand traps, and they still were able to beat me. And after that moment, I was like, wow, if my hand traps happened to be board breakers, I could have literally solved the issue. So I'm a full sin type of person. If you like to play hand traps, you go ahead. You have your opening hands be bricked full of hand traps and unplayable cards that cannot play through disruption. That's on you. Uh, anyway, and then I guess arguably I can just sit there and watch my opponent play solitaire since I don't open disruptions anyway. It's a two-sided argument, guys. But anyway, we end on Begalancer, which is a bounce, Teardrop, and Princess in hand. So I should have probably went ahead and used Begalancer right now to bounce back the nib. I really should have done that. That's a huge misplay on my part watching this again. But as you guys will see here, it don't matter. He he had Dark Ruler. This this again blows my mind. The man sees three crazy cards and all he, the only good card he really opened, uh, which the video is gonna end right here, it was gonna be Shadal Fusion. Uh, since I had an extra he could have Shadal Fusion. Uh, so I really would not have had any way to stop that. But that's that the Dark Ruler no more is the kick in the nuts, you know, the final nail in the coffin. 
Uh, without that, I believe, seeing what he had on his hand, I actually believe we had a chance. I believe we, honest to goodness, could have won uh, the game. But Dark Ruler, Nib, and Droll are just too powerful for almost any deck to beat. Uh, so the game actually got drug out for a little bit further, and sadly, I ended up losing uh, because the, my deck ran out of steam, whereas if you guys don't know, like the Dogmatica, the Invoke, and the Shadal package just all work so well together that he was just able to out-resource me. But anyway, guys, I thought this would be a good video to show you Plant Link and Sun Avalon Rika fans out there a little bit of like things you can do in certain situations when you get drolled, when you get nibbed, when you get all, when you get both of those. Uh, we cannot do anything about Dark Ruler currently, but I mean, it is what it is. But anyway, guys, please remember for you guys out there to stay safe and stay healthy. This is Charles from Team COG. Signing out.